Hello, this is Kevin from Team 21229, and today we'll be going over tuning the heading PIDF for the 2.0.0 version of PedroPathing. If you're using an earlier version of PedroPathing, then the tuning process will look slightly different as you'll use dashboard instead of panels and run slightly different op modes to tune the robot, but the overall process should still remain the same. To start, we'll need to open up panels. We'll also need our driver hub and gamepad. We'll select the tuning op mode and use our gamepad to navigate under manual and select the heading tuner op mode. Now we can turn the robot left or right at uh, varying amounts and observe how the robot corrects back to its original heading. Based on the robot's behavior, we can adjust the P, D, and F values based off of how the robot corrects back. You can see in panels that you can navigate over to the configurables tab and go under constants and scroll down until you find coefficients heading PIDF. There you can modify each of its individual values, but just as in the translational, we won't be modifying the I value throughout this process. To tune the feed forward term, also known as F, uh, the feed forward accounts for the friction between the motors, wheels, and ground, and does so by setting a minimum power output to the motors. To tune the feed forward, we can set all the other values to zero and slowly increase the feed forward bit by bit until the robot starts to move. Then we can decrease it a little bit from there. For example, uh, with the value of 0 0.1, the robot doesn't really apply that much power, so it can move, uh, I can move it freely around and it doesn't move at all. So after increasing it, you can start hearing and seeing the robot move around and shake a bit. So after decreasing a little bit to 0 0.03, since I can still hear the robot moving around, I'll keep my feed forward value at 0 0.01. We can first start with tuning the P value. This will control how aggressively the robot turns back to its original heading. For example, if it's way too low, such as 0 0.1, then the robot will most likely not respond back when you turn it. This means that the P value is too weak and we can try increasing it. So once we increase it to 0 0.5, we notice that the robot is actually correcting back this time, except it's correcting back a little bit too slowly and a bit too weak. To try increasing it to a higher value such as 2, this turned out to have more oscillations and overshoot while the robot was turning back, which is undesired. So after adjusting the p-value a couple of times, we can find a sweet spot uh, such that the robot can turn back with minimal overshoot and can correct back pretty quickly and accurately. Again, just as with the translational PIDF, these values can vary from robot to robot. So don't be afraid to try out different values and see what works best for you. Now we can start with tuning the D value. And this will control, uh, this will help dampen the oscillations while the robot is correcting back. However, increasing it too high will create really undesired effects and only saturate the oscillation to make the robot barely functional. So uh, if we can try decreasing the D value from 0 0.3 to 0 0.1, uh, if it's, it's still too high and we can tell from this because the robot corrects back a little bit weakly, which means that the D value is dampening uh, the P value's control a bit too much. So we'll also try to tune this a little bit back and forth to find the sweet spot and this value turned out to be 0 0.02 for my robot. And this allowed the robot to turn back to its original heading with no overshoot. 
If you follow these steps and don't have a secondary PIDA, PIDF enabled, then you're finished with tuning the heading PIDF and can then move on to tuning the drive. However, uh, if you do have the secondary one enabled, then first double check that in panels, the Boolean to use it is set to true. Otherwise, the robot's movements won't reflect the changes you make. This tuning the secondary PIDF will be very similar to tuning the main one, except we'll be trying to tune with smaller angles and see how precise and how accurate the robot is while correcting back from small errors. Shown here is an example of a well-tuned secondary PIDF. Once you follow all of these steps, then you should be done with the heading PIDF. Shown here is a video of a final, final tune PIDF. Thank you for watching, and in the next video, we'll be going over tuning the drive PIDF.